Uh, yeah, the hot seat where no coach ever, ever wants to sit in. Unfortunately, if you're a UCLA fan, for Jim Mora, if his ass wasn't burnt crispy brown after last season, you have a feeling he had second-degree burns on it. That's because his Bruins were one of the most disappointing teams last year in college football. Only four wins in 2016, including just two in Pac-12 play. It was, and I know that, look, I know Josh Rosen, their all-everything quarterback, had an injury halfway through the season. I'm not saying that that didn't in some way, shape, or form affect the season. Bottom line was this team couldn't run the ball from week one all the way to the end of the year. Their running game was dismal throughout. We'll talk more about that in a second. And the defense, well, I kind of felt sorry for them because they were on the field way too long, about 34 minutes per game. That's right. The offense only had the ball less than 24 minutes per contest. Yeah, no wonder I felt sorry for the D. I'm actually surprised that Moore actually still has a job with the Bruins. I'm, I'm very surprised at that. But that doesn't mean that all the other coaches on the Bruins staff were left intact. Okay, At least four new assistant coaches are going to take place for the guys from Westwood. And that includes a new offensive coordinator, Judd Fish, now takes over the reins of the O. Now, Fish at Michigan specialized in the passing attack. And to tell you the truth, UCLA doesn't really need help with that aspect of the game. Before we go any further on the did you know for this preview, did you know that UCLA has had 21 players taken in the NFL draft the last four seasons, including five last year. Now, the 21 taken from 2013 all the way to 2016, that's two more than USC, three more than Stanford, five more than Oregon. So you can't tell me it's a lack of talent that UCLA has for their struggles. It's, my opinion, just lack of team play. And yeah, there's injuries, but every team suffers injuries to a certain degree. They just haven't been playing together at the Bruins. So we'll see if this year they can, because otherwise, more, well, he's going to be gone. Offensively, Josh Rosen, heartbeat of this offense. And I know that in 2016, they were only 3-3 three and three before he got hurt. Okay, of course, got hurt week six against Arizona State. The Bruins only won one game out of their last six when he wasn't there. So you can kind of see the impact. Rosen had thrown for about 2,000 yards um, at the halfway mark of the season. Of course, we never saw him play again. And the year before, uh, threw for almost 4,000 yards. So if he can stay healthy this year, I do think that this will be his last year for the Bruins because I think he's going to go to the NFL draft, even though I know it's going to be a draft that's going to see quite a few quarterbacks taken. I still think Rosen uh, will leave after this year, provided that it's a healthy year, provided that the shoulder doesn't give out. Now, the ground game, yeah, this area needs a lot of help. They do return Nate Starks. They also, too, return Soso Jamambo, the uh, former Texas high school player, um, you know, who picked UCLA over the Longhorns a couple of years ago. He's also the leading returning rusher, but had only um, barely above 300 yards in 2016. Bruin ground game, how bad was it? Well, the passing game threw for about 300 yards per game. Okay, one of the best in the conference. When they came to running the ball, UCLA was second worst in the country out of 128 teams, only 84 yards on average per game, 2.8 yards per carry, and no 100-yard rushing games. I'm not talking about players. I'm talking about as a team, they never broke the century mark rushing for the entire year. So no wonder there are some coaching changes on the staff made. But again, not, not Jim Moore for some reason. Offensive line returns four starters, but have they gotten better? Well, the best of the bunch, well, that's Scott Quisenberry at center. The guards both return to and Nagi Turan and uh, Kenny Lacey's back on the other side at guard. And the left tackle started as a freshman. We're talking about Andre James not entering his sophomore year. Again, UCLA returning most of their offensive line, but they have to be able to pave a way for the ground attack. Otherwise, it'll be another one-dimensional offense for the Bruins, and that's going to result in more losses than wins for the guys from Westwood. Receivers, plenty of experience back. Darren Andrews, last season over 700 yards receiving and four scores, and also to Eldridge Maddington is back as well. So the Bruins, again, they're going to be able to move the ball through the air, but can they move it on the ground? If so, then the Bruins obviously will improve upon that four-win total from last year. So I mentioned earlier for UCLA, the defense, biggest dilemma in 2016, they were on the field too long, about 34 minutes per game, no thanks to the offense. This year, UCLA's biggest dilemma, 
replacing a lot of talent from the NFL. That's right, several players got the call to go to the next level. We're talking about Eddie Vanger, those the defensive tackle, uh, to Karis McKinney, first-round pick from defensive end, and the leading tackler from UCLA a year ago, 120 stops from J.M. Brown, and you lose Bobby and Moreau as well. So like I said, some big shoes to replace. Let's begin on the defensive line for the Bruins. And a couple of seniors, though, are back. So you have some present talent as well with Matt Dickerson at the tackle spot and at defensive end, Jacob Tuyati Mariner. Now, the future could be in place on the line for UCLA, too, at defensive end, probably their most highly talented recruit from this most recent class in Jalen Phillips. Don't be surprised if he is a starter on day one. Linebacker, we mentioned the loss of Brown, but you do return the second leading tackler in Kenny Young. 90 stops a year ago, but he's going to be surrounded linebacker-wise by some inexperience. Not to worry about inexperience at secondary. For the most part, solidified as far as experience with Jaleel Waldude at one safety. Now another, you have Darius Pickett, who last year had three picks as an interceptions for the Bruins. And at a corner, Nate Meadows is back. And the other side, do not be surprised if a true freshman named Darnay Holmes gets to start on the other side. UCLA last year I thought was okay defensively. I thought they were real good against the pass third in the Pac-12 in pass D. As far as special teams, I thought it was mediocre a year ago. The punter Austin Kent's back about 38 yards per boot, so he knows he can do better. And J.J. Molson is back at place kicker. Both freshmen a year ago, last year Molson made 60% of his kicks, 12 of 20. The schedule for UCLA, if you talk about a hot seat game, A&M and their coach, Kevin Sumlin, yeah, he's facing the hot seat as well. Last year's game won by A&M in the Thriller, but this year's game's at the Rose Bowl. You have a feeling that the loser of this game... Yeah, that's going to be hot seat with that Fahrenheit really on the hike. A couple of games later... Yeah, this looks like a game that could be tricky. No gimme in Memphis. The Tigers are a pretty fair football team. Pac-12 opener, it's going to be at Stanford. Cardinal, good team, so UCLA's got to watch out for that one. Second half of the season seems to be more treacherous than the first. Oregon and Washington were not on the schedule last year. The Ducks, despite being 4-8 and eight last year, will be better, but at least UCLA gets them at home. Then the next week, you got to play at Washington against the defending Pac-12 champions. Ouch. Six days later, a game at Utah. And then, second to last game of the year, Battle for Los Angeles against a USC team that looks poised to contend for a national championship. The Vegas win total projection for the Bruins is at seven. Do I think that's too high, too low, or just right? I'm going to say just right, and I'm going to play the dangerous assumption game that Rosen does not have another major injury. If that's the case, this UCLA team is good enough for seven wins. The change of offensive coordinator cannot hurt, and I do think that Josh Rosen will have another nice year. Now, I can't say that they're going to win more than seven. There's some landmines on that schedule that prevent me from saying UCLA is going to do better than seven wins, and defensively, there's a lot of talent to replace, and offensively, that line needs to be a lot better, not just a little bit better. Seven wins will get UCLA into a bowl game, but it's not going to keep them in Pac-12 contention. And in my opinion, it's not going to be enough to keep Jim Morrison off the hot seat. In fact, I think next year he will not be a part of UCLA. That's my look at the Bruins. Catch you later.